hope you're all doing well. Look at this. It's not covered anymore. I can't use it like I used to use it. Uh, if you could tell, there's a difference in size. This doesn't bend more than that. This, I could bend it all the way down. But better a little movement than no movement at all. It's not as painful, so I'm able to do things which ah, makes me happy. Anyhow, I wanted to share, first of all, I wanted to share something exciting. I finally made it to 100,000 subscribers, guys, and it's all because of you. I'm going to show you my plaque. I wanted to open it up on camera, but my husband <laughs> opened it up. I was away, and my husband decided to open it up and see it while I was gone. But here it is. I got a letter from YouTube telling me how exciting it is to reach 100,000. And here is the plaque. How beautiful is it? I'm so excited. I'm just going to open it up and show you what it looks like. And there it is, my silver play button. I'm really, really happy. And this couldn't have happened if it wasn't for you guys. So I'm going to have to say thank you thank you thank you you are the ones that actually made this possible for me so my wish is to make even better videos for you guys i know i'm not the standard chef or cook where everything is fancy i'm a little more rough on the edges i pray that i can make better videos for you guys my wish for the future again i have to thank all of you for allowing this to happen for me so thank you thank you thank you if it wasn't for you guys this would never happen all right guys there you go thank you guys for making this dream come true so I'm gonna put this aside and we have our bowl I'm gonna bring this over here so we're gonna make a cheese that I'm gonna create right now whatever I have at home that's what I'm gonna use to create my cheese if I have nuts, I'll use nuts, and if I don't have nuts, I'll use something else. But I want this to be a very strong cheese, and I want it to be a cheese that will firm up. So we need to find ingredients that's going to give it that umami taste. We have to find ingredients that will give you that cheese flavor. Vegan cheese, for instance, if you're making a cow cheese or a goat cheese, basically the milk as it ages will give you those flavors or whatever the animal ate will also change the flavor of the cheese and because we're making a vegan cheese and we're using other ingredients if it's not milk it's something else uh, we have to use ingredients that's going to give us a nice strong pungent taste so we're going to start off with using lupini flour now lupini is a legume and we are going to add other ingredients to make this to soften it up because right now it is just flour and I'm using a small bag so you'll have an idea if you want to try to make this cheese you're gonna have an idea what to use this bag is 200 grams so we're gonna use I hope I have the right size bowl I might need a bigger bowl I have to dump this in a bigger bowl all right so we're gonna start off with this lupini flour and we're gonna add other ingredients to make this wet okay so we're gonna start off with we're gonna blend some ingredients that's gonna give this pungent taste and replicate some sort of strong cheese and that's what I'm going for this is not going to be one of those soft melting cheese. This is going to be a strong cheese where you're just going to cut a chunk, put it on a piece of bread, and maybe have some fruit with it, or eat it the way it is, or you can use it and grate it as it ages and gets older. It's going to get firmer, and then you're going to use it as a grating cheese. Okay. Now I'll show you why I'm making cheese, because... I haven't been home so I haven't been making a lot of cheese plus my hands just didn't allow me to do much of anything really anyhow so I ran out of cheese this is what I have left but this is what I mean about as it ages you are able to use this to grate onto pasta so this is what my goal is eventually but for now 
when it's still nice and fresh, we could still enjoy it. So we need, and by the way, this is how I keep it in the fridge. Just in a paper bag, in a cotton sack, and as it dries up, you're able to grate it. Okay, you don't want to keep that wrapped up because then it's going to stay soft. Unless you want soft cheese on your pasta, that's good too, right? Okay, so we are going to use some ingredients that's going to help ferment it because we're going to leave this out for at least, I'd say, 24 hours. And one of the ingredients is my sauerkraut. I make my own sauerkraut and this is like a probiotic. And it's going to help this cheese. Number one, if you smell sauerkraut, you know that it's a nice, pungent smell. So we're going to use... Mine has a little bit of green in it because I also added some hostas in this one. But we want to put a nice amount because we're going to blend this up. And we're going to add this to our cheese. Now, how much you use... Is really up to you the more you use the stronger the taste the less you use it won't be as strong so here we go we have I would say about a quarter cup if you pack it up a very pungent sauerkraut okay and to that here's my rejuvelac now this rejuvelac I think it's about maybe three years if not older remember I make rejuvelac and I age it so it gives a nice strong taste notice the bubbles that means see the little bubbles it's fermented you could also tell my lid is ready to pop and I'm gonna use this thanks to my dad because I wouldn't be able to open it otherwise it should have almost like a lemony it should not smell bad you know if it's rancid this has almost like a, a lemon cheese smell if that makes any sense and that's when you know you've aged it to perfection like I said this one here must be at least three years if not older so I'm gonna use a little bit of that as a liquid to blend it up and if this smells like if you see that you're aging it and when you go open it it smells really bad throw that out because you know when it smells bad and when it smells good lemon and cheese smell is a good smell it smells like food if it smells rancid or almost like turpentine smell you do not want to use that so that you throw it out but yes you can age it all you do is well I have instructions if you want I have a PDF file that you can buy it's not expensive and if you buy it you help support my channel but I do have how I age my Rejuvelac. So if you're interested, you could pick one up. And I do have some videos on how I do it. And I do use wheat berries. I tried quinoa, I wasn't crazy about it. I do stick with the wheat berries. I find that's the best way to make Rejuvelac. Okay, so pungent, right? We want a strong cheese. We don't want a mild cheese. If it was a mild cheese, I'd be using uh, solely nuts, um, and maybe a little bit of other, well, you'll see, I have lots of recipes on cheese, uh, but I want something that's really strong that when you grate it on your pasta, you can say, yeah, this is a nice strong cheese. And also we love eating, uh, aged cheese, strong aged cheese. So we're going to use ingredients that's going to give you that taste. And here's one, this is miso. I'm using white miso. And we're going to use a nice heaping, very heaping tablespoon of miso. So that's a good mix. Okay, we'll see if I need more. I will add more. And uh, let's see, I'm going to put a little bit of maple, always, being a Canadian that I am. I'm going to put a little bit of maple, just a little more. Add a little bit. A little bit of sweetness to it we're gonna add let's 
see. Some smoked salt this time around, or you can use regular salt. And I'm going to use about that much. I would say about a teaspoon to start off with, but you know you're going to probably need more. So that's what we're going to start off with. And this is, uh, what's it called? That is the, I hope it's not backwards. I hope when you see this, you don't see it backwards. Maldon smoked uh, smoked salt. Uh, they're crystal salts, but it still gives you that salty, smoky taste. But it's so mild, really. If you really want it extra smoky, you can smoke it yourself. I have videos showing you how I smoke my cheese. Uh, you could do it actually at home with an old uh, pot. Or you can just add liquid smoke if you want to your cheese. I'm not going to put liquid smoke. I'm only putting this because it adds a little extra flavor. Because we're putting this on pasta. We don't want a smoky, smoky cheese on my pasta. So, But that little bit of smoke that's on this salt will add a nice deep flavor to our cheese. Okay, we'll put this aside for now. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, let's see, yes, we'll put some nutritional yeast. You know, this is, not only does it give you B12, but it also has a nice cheesy taste to it, right? We're going for cheese, guys, right? Okay, so I am going to add maybe just a little extra of this. Okay, and now this time around, I'm going to add my, it says firm, but it's actually very soft. So I'm going to need my daughter to help me with this because I won't be able to use scissors because of my crazy thumb. Like I'm already, it hurts. And everything bunched up on this side. My nerves, not my nerves, my tendons on my hand. That's why my finger looks crooked. Anyhow, I'm going to ask my daughter to help me here, Erica, if you don't mind, please, if you could use the scissors just to cut this up. Uh, yes, scissors? Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to add, you know, uh, tofu. Uh, you can actually ferment tofu. You know what stinky tofu is? Here we go. I'm using the whole package. And that's going to help bring this dry stuff back to life again. Okay, I need my, here's my top. And we're going to blend this up. And make a liquid. Sorry, I'm right up your face. Hey, I can't tighten this, Erica. Okay. Here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to get a different bowl because I'm going to probably need it. Okay, let's put this in here for now. And then we'll use this to put my stuff back in. Ah, oh, here we go. See how I have to? I know, this is not some part of it. I have to grab it with this and just use the palm of my hand because this finger doesn't work anymore. And I can't, oh, yeah, it's coming. Whole different way of using my hands. Crazy, it's driving me nuts. But I'm still able to grab things, which is a good thing. Sorry, I'm right in your face, eh? I'm sorry, okay. So the good thing is I'm still able to uh, grab things and something I wasn't able to do at all. It used to click. You would just hear it. Oh, people used to freak out when I would move my, my thumb. They used to say, what is wrong with your hand? But it kept me from doing a lot of things that I like to do, which is cooking. I couldn't cut with my hand. I couldn't cut anything. Oh, I wish you could smell this already. Oh, my Lord. It smells like parmesan. Okay, I'm going to need a spatula. Now, the good thing is that you can still keep adding ingredients to your mixture. If you find that it's too wet, you could add 
uh, either chickpea flour. I do have some uh, fava flour I want to use because that is going to add a nice strong taste also. But if you smell this right now, you're going to say, oh my God, you need cheese. Okay. I'm telling you, it's very easy to create a vegan cheese today. Now, this is why I say when I create something, I pretty much see what I need. If I need more flour, I add more flour. If I uh, need more liquids, I add more liquids. I still have to add my coconut. And I do like to use... You swear that this is cheese. And all I did is use some ingredients that mimics the taste of a strong cheese. Mm. Oh my God. Okay, that is the size. So we know the size of the Lupini bag. It was 200 grams. This year is 349 grams. This is shelf stable. So you could buy this and keep it on your shelf. It doesn't have to get refrigerated. Okay. So that's that. And then I used about a quarter cup of sauerkraut and a lot of white um, miso. I'm using the soybean one you could get rice if you want but i like that one okay so here we go as this sits you're gonna see it starts firming up because the flour starts rehydrating itself okay all right we are going to now use some fava bean. That's going to add also flavor to this. And we're going to add, let me see, one heaping, two, three. If we need more, we'll use more. This is going to start making it nice and firm. I do have to get some coconut. Okay, so I am using uh, organic virgin. Here it is. I'm using this. I, I get it at uh, Costco. If you're in Montreal, you know what Costco is. And it is cold pressed. So this one here now has that taste, almost like a buttery taste. It is um, cold pressed coconut oil. So you will have the taste of the coconut. But I find that when you add this to my cheese or when I add it to my cheese, it has more of a fatty, buttery taste. It does not taste like coconut. And if you've made my cheese and if you've used it, you know. Now, if you want your coconut oil to be uh, tasteless, you could get the refined one where there is no taste whatsoever. But personally, I prefer this taste because it adds a richer, more buttery taste to my cheese. So I'm gonna take I'm going to use a glove to squeeze that in, or you can melt it, which I can do. So I am using one big heaping, that's, I would say, about a third of a cup of coconut oil. 
That should be a third. You could even use more. It's really up to you. Okay. So I am going to just mush it up in there. And if I have to, I will use my glove. I'm so happy I could use my hand again. You have no idea how, uh, if it wasn't for Erica, I don't know how I would do it. I mean, I would help her around the cabin at North, but I had to wrap that finger so tight that it would not move on me. Otherwise, I couldn't do anything really bad. It was really bad. Like right now, just mixing this is a job. It just gets a little discouraging, but I have to say, thank God I've come to this point where I could actually do it. Okay, my hands are clean, guys. Don't freak out. I know some of you freak out on this, but my family's used to To me but if you're squeamish about this put on a glove when you're doing it okay just aside for now and I gotta not use that thumb. Guys, this tastes just like Parmesan. It's like crazy wild. Okay. Now, if you have stinky tofu, you can use that. That's great because not only is it fermented, it's a probiotic. So you could buy maybe a jar of stinky tofu. Try and get the one that's not in like that hot pepper sauce uh, because that will change the color of your, of your cheese. You want it to give it that Parmesan look. So it's almost like a golden look. Um, but it doesn't matter really. It's up to you what you want to grate on your pasta or what you want to eat. But you can use stinky tofu. That is really going to heighten that uh, the taste of your cheese. Okay, so now that coconut oil that I used, when you put this in the fridge, it's going to firm up your paste where it's going. Well, first, okay, let me do one step at a time. I'm always all over the place. Right now, we're going to put this on a bowl, and we're going to put it aside and leave it out. To ferment for uh, it's uh, what 10 it's 11 o'clock here in the morning so uh, 11 till 11 o'clock tomorrow morning uh, then I will transfer it into the refrigerator and then I'm gonna keep it there as long as I need it to firm it up because that's what you need a nice firm cheese so you can shape your discs but this is already nice and pasty so it won't take long to firm up plus I use quite a bit of coconut oil I have chunks of coconut that didn't blend up so that's going to help with the process of shaping your cheese I'm going to add a little extra fava flour like I said I don't really measure guys so Look at what I do and try and repeat it. I promise you, you will not regret it when I tell you that. And this is what I'm using. You can't even see it anymore. It's fava bean protein. That's what I'm using. And you can find that on Amazon. So 
So we're going to mix this. I mean, you could put this in a food processor and have it mix in there. But I find it's just faster for me to wash this bowl than to have to wash my food processor. Now at this point, if you want to add herbs, you can add herbs. But I am making a cheese that could be grated. What I'm going to do is add okay, a little bit of truffle oil. Mm. Now, truffles is very strong tasting and very expensive. You don't have to put this in if you don't have it. And I'm not going to tell you go out and do it because that would be so long. So I'm going to use a little bit of this. I'm not going to use the truffles itself, just the oil. Actually, you know what? I am going to put some truffles in it. Hold on. I just have to find a place to cut it. Why not? Truffles is good with pasta. Look how small that is. There's like two little pieces of this in here. Isn't that crazy? To me, that's crazy wild. Okay, very little because this is super strong. And if you don't like truffles, or if you've never had it, Trust me, you would know once you put truffles in your mouth. It's a flavor that should be, what's the word? Um, it's a flavor that you have to either grow up with. That goes a long way, guys. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this. So as you can see, I use very little for the amount of cheese that I'm making. Okay, definitely need salt. So I'm going to use some Himalayan salt now. And salt, you know, cheese needs to be salted, guys. It's also a nice way to preserve it. And that's how simple this is. Ouch, ouch, ouch. salt just remember that when you do put salt this is gonna tighten up and the flavors are gonna be stronger so don't over salt it don't under salt it because whatever you're doing to this now it's only gonna be more intense later on All right, this tastes like cheese already, guys. I mean, I can have Erica taste it, but you're gonna say, oh, Erica's only saying it because you're her mama. But this, when I tell you it already tastes like cheese, it already tastes like cheese. Now, how many cheese am I gonna get this? Maybe, depends the size of the discs I'm gonna make. I'll probably get four discs I always seem to get the same amount all the time but very easy very easy to do guys okay ay ay okay So 
so that's how you make strong vegan cheese you really have to find ingredients that give you that strong cheese taste the sauerkraut again has a very strong taste miso very strong those are all fermented foods that give the taste you want okay it's a sprinkle for the top okay so you can use a wax top I make my own. You can make these with soy wax. And you leave it on anywhere on a counter where you can have this ferment on you. I am going to slip this in a bag so that it doesn't Nothing to go in it. Oop, that's the wrong hand. Okay. Okay, there you go. I'm not going to close it. I'm just going to lightly tuck it under. And I'm going to leave this on my counter until tomorrow morning same time right now it's 11 11 tomorrow around that time i'm gonna take this and just slip it in the refrigerator and it's going to stay there till it gets nice and firm then i'm gonna scoop it up with an ice cream scooper and make my discs if you look at my other cheese videos they're also done with different ingredients delicious you should Go check those out because they're really, really good. And remember, guys, if you watch my videos, it helps my channel grow. And if you like it, that helps also. Everything helps. So this will go into the refrigerator, and then I am going to make discs. It could stay in there for a couple of hours, up to a day. If you forget about it, that's okay, too. Two days later three days later it's not going to make a difference because this cheese is fermenting now it has all the good ingredients that's going to help age this cheese and get it to a nice firm delicious cheese that you want to enjoy with your family very easy if you make it now you can have it over the holidays uh, if you don't have if you don't make sauerkraut go out and buy sauerkraut that would that will also work so it's very very easy i hate telling people go out and buy ingredients because you know i have this at home so for me it's not a it's not a problem but if you want to give it a try uh, you could probably get some sauerkraut a small jar or if you know somebody who has it ask them i'm sure they're going to give you some sauerkraut if you don't have sauerkraut leave it out if you don't have rejuvelac leave it out use probiotics get two probiotics spread it on top of your uh, your mixture and let that do its thing uh, tofu uh, if you don't have it it's not expensive to buy so uh, miso is the same thing if you don't have it it's not expensive to buy so very simple ingredients but what you get at the end is a delicious delicious cheese something that you could eat sliced on a piece of bread or you can use it once it gets firmer to grate onto your pasta delicious anyhow guys go look at my other videos i could show you part two of this tomorrow where i'm forming the cheese but if you look at any of my firm cheeses you'll see uh, I do show how I do it. It's not hard. Uh, it's not hard to shape this. Anyhow, I'm going to link a cheese where I'm shaping it. I will put a link. It shows you how I am going to shape my cheese. I do use paper and jute. And it 
is very very simple to do guys so i'm gonna say thank you again thank you for helping me make it to a hundred thousand guys i cannot express how grateful and how thankful i am that now have a beautiful plaque to show off that i have fantastic subscribers who come to my channel and watch what i do and guys if you really want to support this channel number one give it a thumbs up and you could also support me i do sell if you go to my website i do sell pdf files of some of my recipes i'll probably put this one up also and the plus is once you buy one of those you can print it out put it in a binder and it's just easier for you to follow them i love you guys and i'll see you in my next video